It's finally here. Final Cut on iPad is now officially out and this is the real deal. This is a fully brand new version of Final Cut Pro for the iPad, completely redesigned from the ground up and I couldn't be more excited for the iPad in general. And I've also been super lucky. Apple invited me up to their offices in London to check it out early, to ask some questions. And since then I've been using it for the past three or four days or so. And I wanted to give you my first kind of early impressions and some overall thoughts on it. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into this video. Let's start with my upfront thoughts because there really is a lot to dig into, but overall, I couldn't be happier with how this kind of Final Cut has turned out. They haven't just taken Final Cut on Mac and plopped it onto the iPad. This is a completely rebuilt version designed with touch in mind and it's got loads of new features which are really cool and really interesting which are kind of iPad specific and it's also got some differences from the Mac version too. This isn't some watered down version of Final Cut Pro either. Pretty much everything you want from Final Cut is here and what I will say is if this is your first time using Final Cut Pro or any kind of more advanced video editing software you're probably going to really like this version because it's quite simple and friendly to get into and there's not loads of stuff going on everywhere which sometimes can be overwhelming when you open one of these more kind of professional apps but overall yeah this is great i think you're gonna love it okay looking into it in a bit more detail now there's absolutely everything here in terms of editing that you need on final cut and if you're coming from the mac version of final cut Everything on this iPad version is going to make sense pretty quickly. There's everything you need to edit, to add text, to do transitions, to do video effects, all of that stuff, it's all here on the iPad and there's no kind of weird baked down version of it. It's pretty much all as you'd expect it to be, which is fantastic. But it is all completely rejigged into this touch first interface and it works just how you'd expect it to. Once you start zooming around, pinching to zoom in, pinching to zoom out, dragging clips on, re-editing clips with your finger, it all makes a lot of sense really quickly. There is full support for the iPad keyboard as well. So all of the keyboard shortcuts that you're used to pretty much all work exactly the same. There are some differences there, but with the Apple Magic Keyboard, it works really nicely together. And if you're more used to that keyboard and trackpad experience, then you can do that here, which is great. And it's nice and fast too. I'm using heavily compressed Sony H265 footage in this project and scrubbing and playing back and all of those things is absolutely perfect on here. It's very comparable to my Mac Studio, but I do have the M2 iPad Pro here, which obviously has a bit more grunt than everything else. And on that note, you do need an iPad with an M series chip. So you need an M1 or an M2 to run Final Cut Pro. And if you don't have that, unfortunately, it's just not going to work. And while I think that is a shame, and it really is a shame, I imagine it's tied to the media engine and the RAM size, which is present on the M series chips, which the other ones just don't have. So everything you need to kind of edit a video is there, but there's some really cool iPad specific features. And I wanted to go over some of my favorite ones because some of these are just so awesome. First off is the jog wheel. This sits on the right hand side. It's one quick tap away. And when you rotate this, it lets you move through your project one frame at a time. So you can make those really specific edits, which you usually make with a mouse or something similar on a Mac. You can also use the Apple Pencil for some really fine control as well, if you need to be really specific. And if you've got an M2 iPad, then you can actually hover over your timeline and highlight things and see what they're going to do before you put your pencil on the iPad, which is really cool as well. Really, really useful for scrubbing. Thirdly is one called live drawing, which is something I was really excited about. But effectively what this does is it lets you draw over your video in real time and Final Cut will animate your drawing. And you can use the pencil for this, but you can also use your finger if you don't have one. And that's really useful. I can imagine it's going to let me highlight things or let me point at stuff very directly in a video. And that's something I've wanted to do for a long time. So I'm really excited to start using that. Another really powerful feature, which is really, really cool as well, is the background removal tool. This basically just lets you add a green screen effect to pretty much anything. So you can cut people out of a frame and put text behind them or change the background. The cutout is very similar to what you'd get on an iPhone when you do portrait mode. So it's never quite perfect, but it's really good if you're just doing a super quick edit or if you've got a nice clean background, you can make the effect really stand out. And I think it's really, really nice. Next up is if you use some of the music from Apple's library, so there's a huge library of music in here. If you drag that on, you get about three minutes of a song, but if you continually drag the track, 
it just rejigs the song so it carries on and on and on, which is really useful because whenever I make a video, and I'm sure a lot of you out there, we have to find a very specific way to loop a song or to match beats up so you can keep the song going for like 10 minutes rather than three. And on this, you can literally just drag it straight out, which is awesome. Unfortunately, it does only work with Apple's media library, which is pretty big, which is cool. But if you drag in any of your own songs, it won't work for those, only the ones which are built in. You can also film directly into Final Cut as well. So if for some reason you've forgotten to get a shot and you really don't have any time, you can just hit the camera button, film straight on your iPad with a bit more finer control as well. You actually get white balance control on the camera and focus control, which is really cool. And then you can film that and it will plonk it straight into your Final Cut project and you can plop it straight into the timeline immediately. You'd have to be in a pretty big pinch to do that, I think, but it's a cool feature regardless. And finally, if you want to, you can take your project from Final Cut on the iPad and then export it and then start editing it on the Mac as well. And then bring that back to iPad if you want to, which is really, really useful if you're across two systems. So yeah, there's loads of new updates here. I've just picked some of my favorite ones. There's a bunch of other stuff as well, but yeah, some really cool stuff here and I'm really excited to start using it properly. So that's enough talking about what it can do. And I wanted to talk now about the things it can't do and some limitations because there are some, but bear in mind, this is an ongoing thing. So I think a lot of this will get updated and features will change over time. But first up, there's no custom LUT support right now. So if you want to color grade, you can normally by using all the stuff inside. But as for custom LUTs, that's not here yet, which is a bit of a shame. And along with that, third party plugin support isn't here yet, but that is coming. What I don't know is if that's going to have to be iPad specific as opposed to what you can just use on the Mac. You can't work off external drives yet. So everything you import into the project stays on the iPad and stays all in one file. And then you have to take that around with you if you want to. And these last two, which I thought were quite strange, on the media bin file, there's no way of making files right now. There's just filters and you have to name everything of keywords to kind of get through your footage, which isn't too difficult, but just having a file system seems a lot more easy and a lot of other apps do that. I'm not sure why that's not here. And lastly, and this is one of the stranger ones I thought was there's no external monitor support for this at all. So if you plug your iPad into your external monitor, you won't get a full kind of desktop experience, which I initially thought was a bit of a shame, but with all of the effort they've put into the touch interface, I can kind of see why they wanna just keep you on the iPad at the moment. While I was listing off the kind of limitations and that, I had kind of this overarching thought and I think Apple isn't really trying to convince us to move away from our desktops. So if you're like a Final Cut user or a Premiere Pro user or a DaVinci Resolve user on your Mac or your PC or whatever, this isn't designed to kind of bring you over and make sure you use that. The idea is, is this is just a different version of Final Cut for different people. Like I said at the start of this video, if you've never used it before, I think this version of Final Cut Pro is going to make a lot more sense to a lot more people. It's a lot more approachable. All the tools are there. And if you want to kind of graduate, if you will, into Final Cut on the Mac, then you've got this really amazing leaping off point. I very much think the idea here was to have an all-in-one studio in the palm of your hand on your iPad where you can do it all. And it's not made to convince people like me to switch over to it. It's just a different version of Final Cut Pro for different users. And I think that's a really good thing. Obviously nothing's perfect. I have some wish list features for this, which I hope come eventually. And first off has to be external monitor support. I think having the iPad there for use for finer control to control everything and then just having a big player on my external monitor would be really cool. So I hope someday that comes. I really hope custom LUT support comes. I know that will be a barrier for quite a lot of people. So getting that in there would be really great. And finally, I'd really like to see proper external drive support. That would be awesome because someone like me gets through hundreds, if not thousands of gigabytes of video footage every other day, then having it all on the iPad doesn't make a lot of sense for someone like me. But overall, I'm pretty stoked on this. You can probably tell this is a really, really cool version of Final Cut Pro. And I'm so excited for people to start using it and for myself to really get into it and use those iPad specific features. This is just a cool update and I'm really excited because it means the future of iPad is looking good. They have put out Logic Pro as well recently, which looks fantastic too. And with things like DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, more and more stuff's coming over. And for me, it's all gravy. 
Before we go, I did want to talk about the pricing structure for Final Cut because this is now $4.99 a month or £50 for the year, which is a bit of a departure for apps like this from Apple. Final Cut has kind of always been a one-time purchase thing. You pay £300 and that's it for life, which is still quite high. And in my eyes, when I was a student, I know that buying something that expensive just kind of wasn't possible. But getting something at £4.99 a month would be possible. So I'm in two minds about this. I love that it's more available for a lot more people, but I don't love that the price could potentially go on for forever and ever. But let me know what you think about that in the comments below because I'd love to know what your opinions are on that one. And that pretty much rounds up this video, to be honest. That's an early look at Final Cut. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, ask me in the comments below as well. And I'll potentially make a few more videos on Final Cut too. So if there's something you want to see, let me know and I will see you all in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.